Finn awoke on the same park bench where he'd first met Wayne at the end of Main Street across from the fire station. It was nighttime. Though the park remained open, he looked down to see his arms and legs faintly glowing. He was his DHI self. Some kid saw him and he knew he was in trouble if he didn't get out of there. A flash of light to his right, Finn strained to see through the thick crowds. Always so many people. And yes, there it was again, another flash of light. For an instant, the crowd parted and he saw Phila B waving. Finn dragged himself across the street, still feeling sluggish, leaving the curious kids behind and caught up with Philippi. I thought it was you. Philippi pocketed the flashlight. You don't look so hot. Have you tried a mirror? Another brown out? I assume so. We're early. Yeah, but if we're here, the chances are the girls are too. We should check on the apartment in the teepee. But let's do it together. Maybach? I went to his house. He's asleep in bed and we can't wake him up. Tomorrow morning they're going to take him to the hospital and start running tests. We've got to find him before that. Who knows what they do to him. Maybach was caught and it wasn't security. It was the overtakers. It has to be. Wayne said Maybach's our computer guy. We know he's been poking around. The overtakers don't want him messing with the DHI server. The brownouts are feeling lousy like this. That's the server doing that. The overtakers are trying to... Kill us? Slow us down. Scare us away. Philippi didn't sound convinced. Then I'd say it's working. So where do we start? The apartment or the TP? Finn looked past Philippi at the glowing windows above the fire station. Neither. Follow me. Finn climbed the stairs on the side of the firehouse two at a time. I should have thought of this before. He told me he lives here. Uh, who? Finn knocked on the door. Wayne answered. Philippi and Finn were welcomed inside. It was a cozy room, all wood and brass, that felt like something from a ship. Wayne wore a heavy wool sweater, khaki pants, and Mickey and Minnie slippers. There were books everywhere, and no television or even a radio. The bed was up in a loft in the very peak of the roof. Wow. Philippi looked around. There were Disney toys scattered around, antiques that went back decades. A fabric wall hanging showed off over a thousand Disney pins. I wondered how long it would take you to look me up. It seemed almost as if Wayne was expecting them. There were three teacups by the stove and three chairs set out facing one another. Wayne poured them some tea and gestured for the two boys to sit down. Can you help us find Maybeck? Was it Maleficent? Wayne's eyebrows arched. He didn't answer Philippi directly. What do you know about her? He had owl-like circles beneath his ice blue eyes. He looked ominous and menacing now instead of like the silly old guy Finn thought him to be. He smiled thinly. Amazing things happen when we put our minds to it. There is a saying that seeing is believing, but believing is seeing as well, and touching, and hearing, connecting. The witch, Maleficent, has something to do with this. He told Wayne everything that had happened recently. Apparently she has everything to do with this. The Overtakers. There are other Overtakers besides Maleficent. Too many to count. Like the pirates. Worker bees is all. The pirates don't matter much. But you must underestimate nothing, no one. Conviction is the better part of intent. Few battles are won by strength alone. Cunning and knowing your resources can help you overpower the most powerful. How do we stop Maleficent? Philippi was anxious. He sipped his tea, liked it, and drank some more. Don't get ahead of yourselves. Maybeck. They won't want anyone to see him. 
Not to hear him, should he call out. Someplace dark and noisy. One of the attractions, like Pirates of the Caribbean. The pirates took him. It's not dark enough, and where would they hide him? The boat, maybe? Hmm. Possible. Though his tone of voice suggested that he didn't give the idea much credence. Well, listen, Obi-Wan. Why don't you tell me and Luke here where to find him, and we'll make for hyperspace. Warmer. Wayne looked at Philippi, though he engaged Finn with his eyes. Space Mountain! Pitch black and super loud. Is he right? Is that where they've got him? Wayne sipped his tea, looking over the cup. I have no idea where your friend is being kept. It's a big park. Very big. Finn thought for a moment. More important, it might be like the teepee inside there. A DHI shadow. That would make Maybach invisible. Easy to hide to say the least. If Wayne knew any answers, his face revealed nothing. It's a place to start. We have to start somewhere. They are keeping you from solving the fable. You see that, don't you? Distracting you. And if we solve it? When we solve it. Rescue your friend. Solve the fable. Only then will we know what's expected of you. Finn and Philippi wouldn't be entering Space Mountain through the front door. Wayne told them of a trap door that existed in the very top of the pointed dome roof. The roof hatch was used by maintenance and to his knowledge had never been locked. If the boys could climb up to the first level of the dome, about 15 feet up, they'd reach a metal ladder that ran up the back of the dome to the pinnacle. From there, they could enter the ride's interior. At Wayne's suggestion, the boys borrowed some rope from the firehouse. They then snuck through the shadows, carrying the heavy ropes over their shoulders, and reached the back side of the attraction. Crouching in some bushes, looking at the steepness of the roof and the small metal ladder that led to the top. The Overtakers have got to assume we'll come from Maybach. But to them we're kids, don't forget that. They'll have patrols. Cameras, maybe. So when we do this, we'll do it quickly. The roof was shaped something like a magician's hat, with a wide brim and a conical peaked crown. There were antennas on top. Philippi proved his climbing skills by tossing one of the ropes over a metal railing on the burnt part of the roof. He tied it off. We're set. Who's going first? Philippi's voice cracked. Finn led the way down the metal ladder. Philippi followed and they descended silently. After a moment, Finn's eyesight began to adjust. They were way up inside of the pointy hat part of the domed ceiling. A gigantic space that contained the entire Space Mountain roller coaster track. He made out a few red exit signs, but they were not bright enough to be seen by. The track was a tangle of metal fringed by catwalks and supported by towering eye beams and steel columns. Finn felt as if he was inside a complicated clock. They reached the catwalk. A path that led along the roller coaster track with a metal mesh floor, and it followed it to a set of metal stairs leading down. This connected to another catwalk. Suddenly, it felt as if they entered a maze. This is crazy. The place is huge. Maybe it could be anywhere. I'm not sure about that. Agreed, it's huge, but look around. Where are you going to hide him? Now that his eyes had fully adjusted, he could make out the size and scope of the complicated track, but it was all exposed and open. Not a good place to hide someone. Hey! Finn held out his hand, seeing his hand. Yeah, I know. Philippi moved his own arm to show Finn that the metal broke up the imaging. His arm appeared to be in pieces, separated by black stripes. The DHI projection in here was spotty at best. You take that side. We'll meet in the middle over there. 
He pointed out a low spot in the ride where the track turned sharply left. If something goes wrong, we get out of here and meet up at the apartment. Got it. Finn descended yet another ladder and then followed a catwalk toward one of the exit signs, using it as a beacon. The catwalks reminded him of submarine movies. If he was hiding someone, Finn thought, he'd stash the hostage close to where the guests made the most noise, in a place where any shouts of help would likely go unheard. Finn searched the track overhead for just such a spot. Then he leaned over the rail of the catwalk and looked below. Not far below him, and slightly to his left, he noticed an indistinct dark shape as he approached. He realized was geometric, a large rectangle. Like the catwalks, its walls were of a heavy wire mesh. Finn climbed over the rail, lowered himself, and dropped to a catwalk below. He reached out and touched the wire mesh. It covered in greasy dust that stuck to his fingers. It looked like a large garden shed, about 6 feet tall, 10 feet deep, and 15 feet long. On the front of a shed, a heavy canvas was hung that prevented Finn from seeing inside. The canvas was tied down on the inside. Finn located the only door, which was wooden framed and also covered with wire mesh. He felt his way down the door and struck a piece of heavy metal. A padlocked, locked out. Psst. Finn tried to signal Philippe, but got no answer. Finn looked around, off into the dark, realizing he completely lost track of his friend. He tried again. Psst. A muffled voice made him spin around. It was coming from inside the screened shed. Philby. Finn tried again, a little louder. He heard the scuffle of feet. Maybach? It's me, Finn. Finn struggled with the lock again, and then remembered. He didn't need to unlock the door. Finn closed his eyes and concentrated on him being made of light. Nothing but light. And he walked through the wall just as he swam through the water without feeling the effect of the current. Once through, he realized how much darker it was inside the shed because of the canvas. Finn felt his way around, stepping over boxes, coils, and pieces of metal. The muffled calls for help became more urgent. I'm right here. Finn turned toward the sound, closer now. He squatted, felt around, and touched an arm. He jumped back, fell over, and knocked something loose, making a loud sound. Mm. Wiggling as he was, a piece of Maybeck's DHI, his left side suddenly showed. Finn lunged forward and untied the gag. Oh man. You okay? No, oh, I'm famished. And I'm thirsty. Thank you, man. Thank you. Finn untied Maybeck's wrists and ankles. Let's book it. We gotta find Philby. He's in here somewhere, looking for you too. Maybeck pulled on the locked door, but it didn't budge. But how'd you- Right through the wall. That's fine for you. But what about me? I can't get through a dumb wall. Sure you can. No, I can't. You're going to have to. Maybeck stared at the dark canvas and the locked door. Are you telling me I could have just walked out of here all along? Not if you've convinced yourself you were trapped. Maybeck reached out. His hand struck the canvas. I don't have the attitude. Do I? You've got the attitude, Maybeck. You're only hitting the wall because you think that's what's supposed to happen. He waited for some support from Finn. Finn demonstrated. First, he reached out and touched the canvas. Then, he reached over a second time, and his hand and forearm passed right through up to his elbow. 
I do not have an attitude. Prove it. He was worried about the noise Phillipe was making trying to get over to the shed. The bumps and bangs seem amplified in this echo chamber. On Maybeck's sixth try, he walked through the wall of the enclosure. Once on the other side, he bent over as if in pain. You okay? Giddy with accomplishment, Maybeck started giggling. <laughs> what a dumb jerk. I could have walked out of there all along. Not with your hands tied. That rope is from this side. The rope would have stopped you from getting through the wall. It was Jez. What was Jez? She called. Called your house? Last night? Just before you crossed over? Finn had figured some of this out on his own. She said she'd meet me. When you checked your watch, the line you fed us about having a hot date, you really did have a hot date. I ditched the girls at It's a Small World. We were going to meet Jazz and me at the carousel. But all of a sudden, I was so cold. I could barely move, like slow motion. Yeah, cold. Finn was thinking, been there, done that. 